Hello everyone. So it's been a while since I filmed this little monster. Here is my Sydney Red Death Adder. And I really don't know how this footage is gonna turn out to be, and you'll probably end up seeing me as well. And it looks like it's an, on an incline, the camera. But I'm doing my best to get a strike shot. Now for for those of you who don't know, Death Adders are best striking snakes in the world. And they can strike and get back into strike position in 0.17 seconds, which is crazy. So we'll try to get that on camera. Ooh. I hope that was good. I hope we had that in focus, but that was amazing. All right, so I'll just grab the camera and put it here so we can try to watch him feed. Let's see if it will work. But that's what I'm talking about, guys. I mean, that strike speed is just amazing. And for a human to beat that with our puny reflexes is obviously impossible. So when somebody puts their hand into a death adder cage and they say that they can withdraw in time, that's obviously complete bullshit. We just cannot match what you just have seen. Um, I'll try to show you guys how beautiful this guy is. So you see he is this intense red color which matches perfectly with the uh, Outback Australian substrate that I have. So they can easily, easily camouflage themselves in earth and also they can easily do that in fallen leaves. So what ends up happening is people do not see these little guys and they step on them and the automatic reflex of the snake ends up being biting them. Back in the day when we didn't have anti-venom, it was 50-50. So there was a chance of survival, obviously, but it wasn't very high. Now with anti-venom, it's, I would say, 100% survival rate due to the fact that antivenom neutralizes their 100% neurotoxic venom beautifully and you can leave the hospital right away. All right, so what I'll do is I'll stop here and I will start filming with the other camera um, as this guy starts eating his little mouse. All right, before I start filming the other guy eat, I wanted to just try to get the strike one more time. You can see, you can probably see the snake caught a luring right now. That's the tail movement that you probably see. All right, let's see if we can get another nice strike. I think that was also good. All right, after the two strike shots, let's quickly watch this guy finish his feeding. Um, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of death adders. I have kept several species of mainland Australian death adders and Indonesian uh, Papua New Guinea death adders. I currently have only two species in my care after selling off what I had. It's the Antarcticus that we see here and the Hawkeye from the northern floodplains. 
the Hawkeye female that I have may be pregnant, but we'll see that soon. She tends to give birth towards the end of December, so we are getting there. Um, but unfortunately, I could never buy the species that I really want to keep, which is Acanthopus valsi with the beautiful orange and black bands. Unfortunately, only a few people in the entire Europe have them, and obviously they they don't want to sell their animals. And also, even they might be over my budgetary limit for snakes. So we'll have to make two these beauties. Obviously, uh, I love the Sydney Reds. They're just amazing looking animals. The male especially, as we are watching him, he's very beautiful. But also the greys are quite nice too. The fu funny thing is, actually red color is the dominant color in these animals. But also the red ones are more valuable because they... Ob obviously this is subjective, but... To most people, they're better looking, and B, for some reason, they're rarer in collections, which should not be the case, as again, red being dominant, genetically speaking. I mean, for people who want to keep venom snakes, I think that others are great animals to work with, and they're also... A nice test for you because if you adhere to basically the principles that you should have uh, during venom snake keeping, you will not get bitten by these guys. They will not chase you out of their cages, they will not strike uh, out of their strike distance, they will sit still and wait for their food and if you don't reach in with your hand, you're quite safe. So it gives you a, basically a test, let's say, you know, have no close call with a death adder and close call with death adders usually means a bite. It can sometimes be a dry bite, but anyway. And then you should be good to, say, uh, take the next step. It basically gives, it basically gives you uh, a green light in the sense that, okay, you have adhered to policies and principles and, uh, you know, you know basically the rules that you said were stuck to and you're not taking this lightly which means you can go into something that is a little bit more challenging obviously a mistake with these guys is quite serious if you do not have antivenom present so you gotta be careful again look at that body color I mean that's just amazing right beautiful beautiful red color that fits perfectly to its environment. Really nice. You know, first Europeans, when they arrived to the island, they noticed these snakes, they called them death adders. Due to the fact that all the other Australian snakes are quite lapid like and they would run away from people. They are quite active animals, but these ones would just stay still and wait for their prey as they fill the ambush predator niche. So they wouldn't move out. People thought that they were deaf, they couldn't hear them. So they called them death adders. Obviously after a couple of them got bitten and died, <laughs> then death adder maybe seemed a better substitute for these animals. Obviously, snake cannot hear air bomb noises. Their ears are not evolved that way, but they can hear the ground vibrations. And death adders, being ambush predators, actually hear those vibrations much better than other snakes in Australia. But their hunting strategy is based on that, and their escape strategy is based on camouflage. So, in either scenario, they should not move. Hence, they were always stationary. He did a good job. The male is getting bigger, uh, the female as well. The male, interestingly, was always the good eater here. The female had problems when she started, but they are both great eaters now, and female caught up with the male. And 
you know, hopefully maybe next breeding season I may think of putting these guys together for some more babies. These are, I think, only F1, so they can still be inbred a generation, I think. Uh, obviously, if I could find some that wasn't genetically related, that would be a much better option. But uh, Australian export laws being what they are, we cannot get these beautiful animals out that easily. It's a quiet day here in the snake room today. Uh, the summer cobras are still in brumation before breeding. Last year's attempt failed. I hope this year it works out. All the other snakes basically ate fine without a fuss and their water bowls got cleaned when their mouths were full. So it was an easy deal. Unfortunately the insularis, Trimeresus insularis that I have is still being force fed, well, assist fed, let's say. So that's what happened with her, but she's getting bigger and she seems quite unstressed by the situation, so I guess we are fine there as well. Uh, so this little beastie is almost done, and I guess it's a good place to cut. Um, I hope you guys like the strike shots. I will only know how they turn out to be when I edit them, obviously. Uh, but I try to get a good view of them. So I hope you guys like this one and I will hopefully see you guys next week. Alright, take care. Bye.